The house always had a heaviness to it, a weight in the air that settled over you as soon as you crossed the threshold. Jack said it was just old, that it had been in his family for generations, tucked deep in the backwoods of Alabama. I didn't like the place from the start, the walls too thick with history, the silence too loud, but he loved it, said it was a fresh start for us. It wasn't long before the small things began to happen. At first, it was barely noticeable. Scratches, no bigger than a thorn's prick, showed up on Jack's back and arms. He said he didn't remember how he got them, but I brushed it off. You probably bumped into something, I'd say, half listening, focusing on unpacking the boxes that still cluttered the house. We'd just moved in, after all. I was the practical one, always had been. I didn't believe in ghosts, no matter how many stories this land seemed to hold. But then, the nights became restless. Strange sounds drifted through the house, scraping like fingernails on wood, echoing through the halls. The floors groaned as if under the weight of unseen footsteps. Jack would wake up drenched in sweat, claiming he felt something crawl across his chest. It's the old house settling, I'd say, though the pit in my stomach tightened each night. The wounds on Jack's body worsened. What had started as tiny scratches became deep, jagged cuts. They bled too much for something he could have done to himself, too precise in their brutality. He'd wake up screaming some nights, clutching his arms, his face twisted in pain. One night, as I lay beside him, the air around us shifted. The sound of something dragging, something heavy and deliberate echoed from the hall. It wasn't the creak of old wood this time, it was slower, more menacing. Jack's breath caught and I could see the fear in his eyes, a fear I hadn't believed until that moment. Something was in the house with us. That night, the cuts weren't cuts anymore. They were burns, angry, raw welts that blistered his skin in patterns I couldn't understand. I tried to tell myself they were accidents, maybe an allergic reaction, but in my gut, I knew that wasn't true. It wasn't until the next morning when I cleaned his wounds that I saw it clearly. The burns weren't random. They formed letters, letters I knew too well. Thatcher, his last name, etched into his skin like a brand. A cold wave of dread washed over me. My mind flashed back to the stories I'd read, the records of the enslaved people his family had once owned, the Thatchers had branded their slaves, marking them as property, and now that same brand was seared into my husband's back. That night, the house was colder than usual. The dragging sound came again, only louder. The walls groaned, and then there was a sharp crack, like something splintering in the darkness. Jack shot up in bed, eyes wide with terror. He was covered in fresh burns, his skin seared with the same name that had marked so many before him. That's when they came. They appeared out of the shadows, dark figures that moved with a weight that wasn't human. Their faces were gaunt, hollow-eyed, their presence heavy with rage. I froze, heart pounding. Each of them bore the same brand on their cheeks, Thatcher. They stared at Jack, their eyes filled with a hatred older than the walls around us. One of them stepped forward, voice low and ragged, as if it had been clawing its way out of the grave. You are his blood! It said, the words thick with fury. Your kin did this to us. Jack fell to his knees, trembling as the full weight of their words crashed over him. He was their descendant. The blood of their tormentors ran through his veins. His family had owned these souls, had marked them, tortured them, and now they had come to reclaim what had been stolen from them. I watched, rooted in place, the truth hitting me like a blow. Jack had inherited more than just this house. He had inherited their pain, their suffering, and their rage. The ghosts weren't here for me, they had come for him, and there was no escaping the history etched into his skin. In the end, the silence was louder than any sound I'd ever heard in that house. The weight of their gaze never left us, even after they disappeared into the shadows. Jack would bear their mark forever, just as his ancestors had marked them. And I, tied to him by love and vows, was left to witness the past drag him down into its depths. Credits narration by Aphronomenon Studio. If you don't like eerie stories but still listen, brace yourself. This one's got ghosts and chills. At first I didn't believe him, thought he was being dramatic. The woods are just playing tricks on you, I'd say. But then the wounds got deeper, more deliberate, almost like they were coming from inside him. He'd wake up gasping, 
crisscrossed with cuts, his back bruised like someone took a whip to it. We'd been living on his family's land, a crumbling plantation house in Alabama. His idea, not mine. The air felt thick, like it carried old secrets. Then the burns came. Angry red welts formed symbols I couldn't understand. One night I froze. The shape, letters form his last name, Thatcher. The same mark I'd seen in slave records burned into flesh to claim ownership. Jack screamed, thrashing awake. Gaunt, dark figures appeared, eyes hollow, anger centuries old. Their cheeks bore the same brand. Thatcher, you are his blood, one rasped. Your kin did this to us. Jack crumbled, his face twisted in horror. I stood frozen as the truth settled over me. Jack's ancestors had owned these souls, branded them. Now they came for him. Vengeance passed down through bloodlines, and I, tied to him by love and vows, left to bear witness.